Honorable President of India, ladies and gentlemen, it's a matter of pride and honor for all of us to be present here in the hallowed precincts of Rashtrapati Bhavan in the august present of Honorable President of India. May I now request Director NAFM, Mr. Harsh Kumar, to deliver his welcome speech. At the outset, I'm grateful to the President of India to have taken out time from his busy schedule to address the probationers. This will go a long way in instilling values which most probationers are expected to imbibe. Sir, your Ashir Vachan will always be with them as a compass to show the right path whenever situation gets clouded. So let me introduce this bright group to you. We have 82 young officers, uh, officer trainees, pursuing diploma in public financial management as a part of the initial training at an IFM. They belong to Indian Civil Account Service, Defense Account Service, Post and Telegraph Accounts and Finance Service, and Railway Account Service. So this group has 42 engineers, nine doctors, one MBA, one CA, and 29 postgraduates in different disciplines. In times to come, this bright group will be able to understand and appreciate executive views better and add more value to accounting services. Sir, as you know, a number of them write the exam again, and 17 of them have qualified in the recently concluded exams. Sir, NIFM has been very lucky to have got your direct guidance in the earlier years when, as finance minister, you were also the president of NIFM society. Sir, we have been following your vision, a vision you had provided us, and path you had set for us. I'm very happy to mention, sir, that over the years we have done well. And this year, 15, 16, we have closed with about over 26 crores as revenue, surplus of four crores, and have trained over 3,000 people, uh, participants, sir. Compared to last year, these figures were 20 crore in revenue, 2.5 crores in surplus, and 1640 participants. Sir, our PGDM program, Postgraduate Diploma in Management, Financial Management, the program now stands accredited with National Board of Accreditation, in addition to AICT and um, Association of Indian Universities approval that it had earlier. So we run a very popular MDP on public procurement, and we train over 2,000 officers from different departments each year in the program. So we are going to start upskilling Kendri Vidyale school teachers in a big way in this year, sir, in the discipline of commerce and economics. So we'll also be starting training in the discipline of financial management for local bodies, both urban and rural. Today, for us, it's a great pleasure that we are the Vibhin Lekha Sevao of Prashikshu Adhikari Rashtrapati Bhavan in this Garima in Parishar. We have now completed the foundation course in the foundation. तथा वर्तमान में राष्ट्रीय वित्तीय प्रबंधन संस्थान में वित्त एवं लेखा संबंधी विषयों का गहन प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहे हैं हम विभिन्न प्रशिक्षु अधिकारी देश के विविध भौगोलिक एवं भाषाई क्षेत्रों से संबंध रखते हैं तथा समेकित राष्ट्रीय एकता एवं प्रगति हेतु दृढ़ संकल्पित हैं वर्तमान में राष्ट्रीय वित्तीय प्रबंधन संस्थान द्वारा अकादमिक प्रशिक्षण के साथ साथ सांस्कृतिक एवं सह शैक्षिक गतिविधियों के माध्यम से हमारे सर्वांगीण व्यक्तित्व का विकास हो रहा है महोदय इस सौभाग्यशाली क्षण में हम आपके आशीर्वाद एवं सतत मार्गदर्शन के आकांक्षी हैं जिससे कि भविष्य में हम निस्वार्थ भाव एवं समर्पण की भावना से अपने कर्तव्यों के भली भांति निर्वहन में सक्षम हो सके जय हिंद it is an honor to be present in this magnificent precinct to share with you a brief narrative of our professional training experience at the National Institute of Financial Management. Upon reaching the serene green campus of NIFM in January, we were greeted by the motto and core philosophy, Manushivati Bhumirarthaha, the real asset of a nation is human resource. The transition of human into human capital comes when we arm them with the right knowledge, the app tools, and a fiery spirit to fulfill their duties and responsibilities. Our training thus far has resounded with the same. Sharpening of the intellect takes primacy here. Sir, our classroom training has served this end well, spanning subjects like government accounting, commercial accounting, public financial management, amongst others. As our work becomes data dense in the coming times, forward-looking modules on the use of IT tools and data analytics equips us well. Our training has also included parliamentary attachment, training with the Reserve Bank of India and the National Academy of Audit and Accounts, Shimla. Here we gained insights into the functioning of our complementary stakeholders, namely the legislature, the banking sector and the auditing agencies. This helped us develop a deeper appreciation of how all of us need to work as a cohesive unit, 
each playing its own part in the making of a better India. Inculcating a sense of public service and discipline is equally important. This has been emphasized through modules like Ethics and Values in Public Governance conducted by the UNDP and DOPT. But more than that, it has been our interaction with senior officers that have helped us imbibe what being an officer is truly about. A central takeaway from such inspiring exchanges is to have an insatiable drive to be the best at what we do. Sir, we seek your guidance and blessings for realizing our shared dream of reforming India and transforming India. Thank you. Jai Hind. The first act we did in 190 years was the act of introduction of the Constitution, not of sin, give to ourselves the Constitution. And all the changes, this building are the mute witness. The changes are not merely confined to Indian subcontinent. It is encompassed large quantum of territories. Of course, Indian subcontinent, including Pakistan, Bangladesh. And at that point of time, at the height of the British colonial power, the administrative jurisdiction of the Governor General and Viceroy of India was extended as far as Eden, Singapore, Maldives, Sri Lanka, etc. Therefore, the changes had its profound impact on the contemporary history and this building is the mute witness of that. I am delighted to have the opportunity of meeting young and energetic professionals from the organized account service of the government, Indian Civil Account Service, Defense Account Service, Postal and Telegraph Account Service, and Finance Services, and Indian Railway Account Services. You represent, in large measures, the future of accounting and auditing governments in this vast country. Perhaps you are aware of that after the transfer of power from East India Company to the British government, in 1858, certain important acts were enacted by the British government. And one such act was the creation of the Office of Controller General of Audit and Accounts. We celebrated 150th year of CAG's existence in 1961. And then, up to 1976, audit and accounts were inseparable in the administration with the passage of an act of India, Indian Parliament. In 1976, accounts were separated from auditing function. And at that point of time, I was in the Ministry of Finance, but I was looking after two other departments, revenue and banking. And this comes within the purview of the Department of Expenditure. And I understand the bill was passed, uh, piloted by my colleagues, Mrs. Rothagi. C. Subramaniam was the finance minister at that point of time. And recently, we completed the 40th year of the establishment of Indian Account Service. And normally, it is being celebrated from 1st of May. Therefore, you are discharging very important responsibilities. I welcome you on another count that you are entering into the public service. 
and huge responsibility will lie on your young shoulders, which you will not find any parallel in any other job. In India, today the tremendous responsibilities are to be carried on and discharged by the civil servants in different branches of administration which is a unique opportunity for young, receptive and adaptive mind to make their contribution in shaping a modern nation out of the oldest civilization of more than 5,000 years old. More than often you hear, we are an old nation we are an old civilization, but a young nation. And truly, after 190 years of colonial rule, associated with exploitation, drainage, poverty, deprivation, pandemics, and series of other unfortunate events associated, we are to build up our future for a huge mass of people. It's not very easy. If you shut your eyes for a moment and think of the enormity of this transformation encompassing 128 crores people, 122 languages used in everyday life, 1800 dialects, seven religions practiced, and over and above, presence of a large chunk of population of all major three ethnic groups. Caucasians, Dravidians, and Mongolites. Therefore, and the marvel of it is yet all these diversities are converged under one system, one constitution, one flag, one title, that is India. Therefore, the enormity, challenges associated with it of transforming this into a modern administration is truly a challenging job. And I'm happy that as young persons, you have taken this responsibility on your young shoulders. I wish you all success. The motto of your institution where you are trained, belonging to different services. That is all resources, the most important resources is the human resource. And if we can develop these human resources, with that resources we can fully exploit, utilize all other natural resources or man-made resources in a much better way. Therefore, the creation of human resources is the most important. And I congratulate your training center, NIFM, for choosing this motto, which is, of course, from <clears throat> Kautillos, as Kautillo, as a lawgiver, as an advisor to the king, has dealt in details in his Earth Sastra, and that is being, though it was composed many centuries ago, but many of you, many part of it is still relevant. 
whether in audit and accounts, whether in regard to the appointment of ambassadors, whether in regard to the amount of collections of revenues, whether in regard to the dispense of justice, Kautilo's advice to the king, you will find very relevant and very interesting. So it is based on that, this motto will definitely show you path in discharging your responsibilities and duty. As while introducing the subject, it has been pointed out, today you are not concerned only with the government accounts, commercial accounts, corporate accounts, both in the public sector, private sector, joint sector, various autonomous bodies, all these are mixed up today. And the economy is moving towards a new dimension, a new direction. Decision making is not confined within the geographical territory of any country today. However, high and mighty it may be. As the world development, truly emergence of a global village, since the Second World War, emergence of really one world, in the formation of various international organizations through human ingenuity, United Nations, International Monetary Fund, International Bank of Reconstruction and Development, IBRD, which is popularly known as World Bank, and World Trade Organizations. And all these have not taken place by one go. IMF and World Bank started functioning from 1985, I'm sorry, 1945, uh, at the end of the Second World War. But World Trade Organization came to exist in 1st of January 1995 after the Marrakesh Declaration. 2008 financial crisis has also created an informal organization, but it is emerging very fast as a world body, which is popularly known as Group 20, G20, which account for nearly 87% of the world output. And to speak of, of course, a huge human beings, because China, India, USA, Russia, all are included, entire Europe, all are included, African countries, in this group. Though it is represented by 20 prime ministers or finance ministers, and this is the latest organization in the world organizations, and it was created after the financial crisis of 2008. The indiscreet action of a housing banking in the United States is triggered off such a situation that very soon the world leaders were alarmed of the adverse impact of that financial crisis entire European and North American banking system, except USA, had to face a very serious challenge because of this financial crisis. And all giant banking corporate sectors started facing very difficult situation. To resolve that, 
at the initiative of the then world leaders, this informal gathering. And since then, it is making its own contribution. Therefore, you will find in your day-to-day -day activities that your work, your activity is not merely influenced by the decision of yours or the decision of your superiors or even by the decision of your country, but also by the developments which are taking place beyond your territorial jurisdiction. So to cope with that situation, what will be utmost needed is to keep your mind free to be deceptive to any new ideas. Make it flexible enough to be adopted to the new techniques, new technologies, new instrument, new devices available to you. And always to apply your mind, intellect, thought process, so that you need not necessarily be a carbon copy of others, but in your activities, you will have the imprint of your own ingenuity, thinking. And in that process, you will find that you will be successful and you will be making your own contribution in building up of your country, your society to which you belong. I would not like to lengthen my observations. I would like to say only, I wish you success, Godspeed in all your endeavors and to make your own contribution to your own satisfaction because I always believe in Gandhi's observations, he advised that every individual should be the agent of change, change himself or herself. The change which he or she wants to have in his world, in his or her surroundings, be the agent of that change be the agent of the advancement, be the agent of forward movement, and shortly you will achieve in your success. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind. It is indeed a matter of honor for me to propose the vote of thanks for the first citizen of our country, the Supreme Commander of our Armed Forces, for sharing his highly valued thoughts and time with all of us. With the deepest respect, sir, I would like to mention that your kind words of erudition and advice would go a long way in shaping the careers and lives of the young officers while rendering service with the highest sense of probity and propriety. So your words about changing word, interconnected word, and an open mind with the deep roots in India will go a long way in shaping their careers. I am also grateful to the Secretariat and officers of Rashtrapati Bhavan for making this meeting possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.